Yoshi's Woolly World for the Wii U is one of those over-the-top cheery games that older video games fans might immediately dismiss as being for young children, offering only the same old early 90s Nintendo platforming most of us have already seen a thousand times over that hardly ever changes, nor has much room to change, arguably being a genre destined to be forever stale. In 2015, when the game launched, I didn't even give the Green Dinosaur three minutes of serious thought, feeling as if my innocent days of enjoying Yoshi were long dead, thanks to the terrible burden of adulthood. But now in 2018, three years later, and even with a key feature of the game being fully inaccessible thanks to Nintendo pulling the plug on Miiverse, I could not have been more wrong or stupid to dismiss what I now believe to be one of the Wii U's top five games, and quite possibly the greatest Yoshi game to date. Nintendo is a very lucky company to have pioneered action-adventure platformers with Mario and all of his friends, charming billions of people worldwide, ultimately allowing the Japanese powerhouse to continue to dish out more and more sequels. And yes, as video games exploded in popularity, Nintendo has absorbed a large amount of hate and been labeled as a company for kids that just makes the same game over and over again. But one cannot argue that they do it with an unmistakable dash of perfection, a trait that over the years has been commonly referred to as Nintendo Polish. This polish is even seen in games that Nintendo does not personally develop, of which Yoshi's Woolly World is a perfect example, being a product of Goodfeel, a company first known for developing educational games before hitting the big time with Nintendo. The Tokyo-based studio took the proven framework set in 1995 with Yoshi's Island on the SNES and combined it with the overwhelmingly cute charm the dinosaur has grown into over the years. But they didn't stop there. They also removed a large chunk of needless frustration and replaced it with fun instead, then sugarcoated it with a never-before-seen art style that not only makes it stand out among platformers, but also paves the way for new gameplay mechanics that are nothing but pure fun and enough to freshen the same old 90s formula. Yoshi's Island is surely an excellent game many of us have fond childhood memories of, but we all also recall the rage-inducing Baby Mario and the game's evil red coins that can easily turn the experience sour. Yoshi's Woolly World solves both of those issues by removing the baby entirely and replacing the 20 red coins of each stage with 20 Miiverse stamps collected in the form of gems. These gems are a huge part of the gameplay as they also double as a currency for special power-ups. As such, the stages are littered with them, often in very stylish patterns that add to the visual charm, and oftentimes are collected with very fast and fluid movement, similar to the best kind of bonus stages of the 16-bit days where collecting standard coins or bananas actually meant something. The special 20 gems are very simply just mixed in with these bedazzling arrays, and the hidden goops are usually fairly easy to spot, unlike the red coins of Yoshi's Island, which oftentimes were wedged under random stumps that required excessive ground pounding, or on screen for maybe two seconds before flying away with a shy guy, polluting the idea of a good challenge with the stench of annoyance and obtuse mechanics. The only incentive back then was to unlock a special stage through a perfect score on every level, Yoshi's Woolly World retains that, but offers more incentive to master the levels. One of the returning collectibles is five sunflowers per stage, which are now the only key required to unlock the world's special stage. They are also saved upon stage completion, meaning if you only collect three on your first pass, you just need to go back and grab the other two the next time you try the stage, and it will count as having collected all five, eliminating a lot of the headache from Yoshi's Island. But the true shining feature of Woolly World are the five Wonder Wools hidden in each stage, which all knit together a brand new Yoshi, based on the theme of the level, usually, expanding even on the many Yoshi colors seen in Yoshi's story on the N64. Alongside the art direction, stage design, and music, this was by far my favorite aspect of this game. With each yarn color you find on the way to the stage goal, it's exciting to guess what Yoshi you are putting together, and then when you actually see the Yoshi come to life, you are stabbed to death with an overwhelming cuteness that no video game has ever had. Maybe you have always liked Red Yoshi. Well, this game gives you several Red Yoshis, one of which looks like a watermelon and has special watermelon striped boots. There's a blue Yoshi with stars on his big puffy cheeks, one with a snowflake on his belly and smack on his big round nose, and even one that looks like a panda bear. There are over 54 unique never-before-seen Yoshi designs to collect. And on top of that, almost every amiibo figure out there creates a Yoshi. Even somebody tough and brash like Falco Lombardi of the Star Fox team has never looked more adorable. They could have just stopped there and won the hearts of millions, but Woolly World has so much more to praise beyond the ever-exciting suspense of knitting together new Yoshis. So I guess it's time we talk about the yarn, the entire concept of this game. There is really nothing to say other than the textures are stunning, and due to being so unique, even rival today's graphics. 
Every single thing on the screen is made out of yarn, everything from big rainbows to delicious cookies with smiley faces on them, and it creates this incredibly endearing charm that could break even the most macho dudes. The yarn also creates fun gameplay mechanics, such as gulping up knots to unravel entire structures and reveal hidden areas, and also knitting together new objects like pipes that lead to secret areas or new platforms to clear big gaps. It's also really neat to see familiar Mario and Yoshi enemies made fully of yarn. It's all very small additions, but it's so tastefully done that it's enough to add fun to the basic Mario platformer, especially when broken up with the common transformation bonus areas, another Yoshi's Island mechanic that has been vastly improved. Instead of being embedded into the stage, Yoshi now enters a specific bonus room where he transforms into something crazy like a motorcycle or mermaid, and the action is super fast paced with colorful gems everywhere, creating a very welcome 30 seconds or so of pure fun to break up the normal stage pacing of sniffing out hidden items. All in all, the stage design incorporates the best of Yoshi's past, straightens out the knots that weren't so great in the past while still retaining a moderately increasing challenge and it adds a hugely adorable new flair to the whole experience. But before I close out this review, I absolutely have to talk about Woolly World's music, arguably the best aspect of the entire thing. The majority of the songs were composed by Tomoya Tamita, the former Konami employee responsible for many outstanding Castlevania and Goemon soundtracks, and his talent shines brightly here as well. I don't think there has ever been more bouncy and happy music than in this game and it complements the overwhelmingly cute Yoshis and the world of fluffy things so well. But beyond the insane happiness that can cure depression, is some very impressive bass guitar, most notably in the Fortress stages. I cannot think of any other video game that features such prominent bass lines played with a real electric bass, and it's a beautiful take on the feel of a boss castle or hazy maze cave. Mario and Yoshi have always had fantastic music, and many of us still hum along to Yoshi's Island's half dozen or so songs, but Yoshi's Woolly World doesn't just loop the same overworld themes again and again. Rather, nearly every single stage has its own unique song with only a few repeats, creating over 64 outstanding tracks. If you aren't in awe by the array of adorable Yoshis or charming stage designs as you go level to level, the music will definitely fill that void. The bottom line is no matter what way you spin it, Yoshi's Woolly World will have you smiling with each new level, each new song, and each new Yoshi, despite it being just another 8 level per world platformer with easy 3 hit bosses. And although some of the difficulty has gone away, especially with the use of the new badge system that can grant you immunity to lava and pits, the usual culprits of death in these platformers, there is still a perfect curve as you progress to the later worlds and plenty of challenging spots that will take a few tries for even veteran Yoshi players but never make you rage like the red coins of Yoshi's Island. Yoshi's Woolly World is truly the best of everything Yoshi that Nintendo has given us over the years and then some, and Goodfeel really modeled the game after their name, creating the ultimate casual game for people of all ages that is built around the entire principle of feeling happy. Take it from a guy who has been dealing with severe depression for over 20 years, this game will make you smile, and it's always a joy to revisit the style of game that made the hobby popular in the first place. Until Good Feel hits us with another dopamine rush in the form of Yoshi's Switch, I highly recommend Yoshi's Woolly World for your fix of nothing but good feelings. And if you don't feel like spending the $30 yourself, feel free to check out the playlist on my channel where I play through the entire game. And thanks a lot for watching.